The chance fought F-4U Corsair was a carrier-based fighter originally developed for the United States Navy in 1938. The first prototype, designated the XF-4U-1, took flight in May of 1940. A few months later, speed trials exceeded 400 miles per hour, making the Corsair the first U.S.-made fighter to do so in level flight. By September of 1942, the first production models of F-4U-1s were delivered to the Navy and Marine Corps. The Corsair first saw action in World War II with the Marines over Guadalcanal and the Solomon Islands. It was an instant favorite for its ability to outperform the Japanese Zero. The new fighter was fast, highly maneuverable, and rugged. The most distinctive features of the Corsair were the inverted gull wings and large propeller blades. It was powered by the Pratt & Whitney R2800 engine, which provided 2,000 horsepower and was considered the most powerful aircraft engine in the world at that time. Armament included six 50 caliber Browning machine guns mounted in the wings and fuselage. By the end of the war, Navy tallies estimated an 11 to 1 kill ratio over the zero. Over the years, the Corsair would be continually upgraded and later see action in Korea and Vietnam. More than 11,700 were built in 13 years of production. The Mirage III was a highly exported supersonic all-weather fighter designed by the French in the 1950s. In need of a new lightweight interceptor, the French awarded a contract to Dassault Aviation for their sporty-looking prototype. The first Mirage III took flight on November 17, 1956, and reached the top speed of Mach 1.52. In later trials, it would exceed Mach 2, making it the first European aircraft to do so in level flight. By July of 1961, 95 Mirage 3C production models were delivered to the French Air Force. It was a single-seat interceptor powered by an ATAR 09B turbojet engine and featured an islet variable exhaust. The Delta-style wings were mounted low on the aircraft, and it featured a large, swept-back tail fin. Armament included two 30-millimeter cannons mounted in gun ports under the intakes, and a total of five missile pylons, two under each wing and one under the fuselage. In January of 1964, further advancements led to the Mirage III Strike Eagle, this multi-role variant incorporated a Doppler navigation radar and a Serrano II dual-mode air-ground radar warning system. With the addition of an upgraded ATAR 09C engine, the aircraft's top speed maxed out at Mach 2.2. Production of the Mirage 3 would go on for over a decade, ending in the mid-1960s. Over the years, several variants have been adopted by foreign air forces, some of which are still in use today. The 
Focke Wolf 190 was a multi-purpose fighter developed for the German Air Force during World War II. It first took flight on June 1, 1939, and entered service with the Luftwaffe by early 1941. The first production Focke Wolf 190A1 turned out to be a superior dogfighter. It was armed with two machine guns mounted in the nose and up to four 20mm cannons in the wings. For its ability to outperform most Allied aircraft, the Falk Wolf quickly established itself as a superior fighter. By 1944, the upgraded FW-190D9, nicknamed Dora, was delivered to German forces. This was the Luftwaffe's definitive interceptor fighter. The engine was replaced by the inline Jumo 213A1 power plant, which performed better at high altitudes. With this upgrade, the Falk Wolf also saw an increase in climb rate and a boosted max speed of 425 miles per hour. But due to German fuel shortages, only a handful of the Falk Wolf 190Ds ever saw combat. During World War II, no fewer than 40 variants of the Falk Wolf 190 were produced, with more than 20,000 built. It is considered by most to be the best German fighter of World War II. The North American F-15 Eagle was a state-of-the-art, all-weather tactical fighter developed for the United States Air Force following the Vietnam War. The initial model, the single-seat F-15A, first took flight in July of 1972. Two years later, the dual-seat F-15B model entered service with the United States Air Force. The F-15's ability to outperform its adversaries came from a combination of maneuverability, speed, and firepower. Its low wing loading and high engine thrust to weight ratio allowed for exceptional turning at high speeds. Armaments for the Eagle included a six barrel 20 millimeter Gatling gun and a variety of air to air missiles. In 1979, the upgraded C and D models were fitted with conformal fuel tanks to extend its ferry range to about 3,500 miles. During Operation Desert Storm, F-15C models chalked up 34 enemy air-to-air -air kills, while F-15E Strike Eagles engaged mostly ground targets. Over the years, several avionic upgrades have been added to increase the F-15's lethality. Its pulse Doppler radar system can detect and track enemy aircraft outside visual range at extremely low and high altitudes. The heads-up display, or HUD, projects essential flight information onto the windscreen so that the pilot doesn't have to look down at the instrument panel. And a tactical electronic warfare system has been integrated which can identify friend from foe. After three decades of service, most of the Air Force's F-15s are now being replaced by the F-22 Raptor. However, a few F-15s will be continually upgraded to remain on active duty to support an air-to-ground strike role. Douglas A-1 Sky Raider was a multi-purpose fighter bomber originally designed for the United States Navy during World War II. The first prototype took flight on March 18, 1945, and by 1946 the first production models were delivered to the Navy. The A-1 was a multi-purpose single-seat attack bomber. It used a low-mounted, straight-wing design, which gave it excellent maneuverability at low speeds. The prop-driven Wright R3350 radial engine provided the A1 with a top speed of more than 300 miles per hour.
Armaments included four 20 millimeter cannons and armor plating for protection from ground fire. 15 hard points found on the fuselage and wings could accommodate bombs, rockets, torpedoes, and mines. It first saw combat in 1951 during the Korean War, attacking mainly ground targets. But the Sky Raider was also a capable dogfight. During the Vietnam War, Navy pilots shot down two North Vietnamese MiG-17s. In 1964, the United States Air Force adopted and modified the Sky Raider, designating it the A-1E. Capable of carrying an abundance of ordnance and sustaining ground fire, it was tasked with a close ground support role. Between the years of 1944 and 1957, 3,180 Sky Raiders were built in 28 different variants. Over the course of its career, this versatile workhorse has served with distinction, supporting such roles as an attack bomber, photo reconnaissance platform, casualty evacuation, and general utility. In April 1941, automaker Henry Ford responded to President Roosevelt's call for U.S. factories to increase airplane manufacturing to 50,000 aircraft a year by building a 3.5 million square foot facility at Willow Run, Michigan. Willow Run was specifically built to construct a consolidated B-24 aircraft, America's newest four-engine heavy bomber. Despite opening in 1941, the first airplane was not delivered until September of 1942. Due to a severe manpower shortage and a delay in adapting the automotive assembly line process to the manufacturing of aircraft, production slowed almost to a halt. Undaunted, Ford brought workers in from the south and the government's mandate that Ford hire 12,000 women got Willow Run back on track. By the end of 1943, the giant plant finally started to reach full bomber production. 190 aircraft were delivered in June of 1943, 231 in August, and 308 in October. By 1944, 650 B-24s were rolling off the line every month. Willow Run's automotive assembly line style of production made it possible for Ford to deliver Liberators to the government for 137,000 each in 1944, compared to 230,000 each two years earlier, saving the government millions of dollars. By 1945, Ford's Willow Run plant was making 70% of all B-24s being delivered. By the time production ceased in late 1945, the total number of B-24s built at Willow Run exceeded 8,000. The Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation of Bethpage, New York was one of the most important builders of military aircraft of the 20th century. Nicknamed the Ironworks, referring to the ruggedness of the planes they manufactured, the plant grew from 6,500 workers in 1941 to over 25,000 in 1943 and expanded its work floor to over 2.5 million square feet. One of the Ironworks' greatest contributions, the SXF Hellcat, would become one of the classic combat planes of World War II. The Hellcat's life began in the metal shop, where the struts and supports were cut and formed into a frame. 
The skin was then riveted, and the familiar shape of the Hellcat began to appear. Quality control tests were done throughout the manufacturing process. The engine and cockpit were then installed, as well as the various electrical and control surfaces. The final stage was to add the unique Grumman invented Stowe wings and a new coat of paint. In March 1945 alone, Grumman set the war record for the most deliveries by a single factory when it cranked out 664 aircraft in just 30 days. That's roughly one new Hellcat built from scratch every hour. The German Army Research Center at Pinamunde was founded in 1937 as one of the five military proving grounds under the Army Weapons Office. Located in a remote wooded region of the German island of Ustum, Pinamunde was selected to be the secret R&D site for the Nazi V weapons program. Over 2,000 scientists would eventually come to work at Pinamunde, studying all aspects of aviation research and rocketry. The V-2 rocket's first static engine tests were performed at Pinamunde in 1940. By 1941, the first V-1 guided missile test flight took place. Further advancements led to the first successful launch of the V-2 rocket on October 3, 1942. Eventually, Allied intelligence became aware of the importance of the Pinamunde factory and Allied bombers were ordered to attack the site. The damage was minimal and the V-2 program was quickly moved, but the site continued as a Nazi R&D hub on a much reduced scale. The Pinamunde factory complex continued producing experimental aircraft and weapon systems right up to the end of the war. With Allied armies closing in all around Germany, Pinamunde scientists delivered the world's first operational jet fighter the ME-262, and the rocket-powered fighter aircraft, the ME-163 Comet. It was hoped the ME-262, with a cruising speed of 541 miles per hour, and the Comet, with its two Mark 108 cannons and its climb rate of nearly 12,000 feet a minute, might blunt the punishing bombing campaign Germany was suffering under. Luckily for Allied airmen, the late arrival of these groundbreaking aircraft proved too late to turn the tide of war. For eight years, the Pinamunde scientists were at the forefront of aviation technology, at the cost of thousands of slave labor lives and billions of Nazi marks. In 1948, in accordance with an agreement with the Allied High Command, the Red Army destroyed the Pinamunde technical facilities, marking the final end to the Nazi secret weapons factory. October 25th, 1944. The war in the Pacific is raging. Just off the Philippine island of Samar, U.S. Navy warships and Japan's powerful center force have been engaged in a fierce battle. But the Japanese Navy is now on the retreat. The battle appears to be over. Suddenly, over the horizon, Nine Japanese Zeros streak towards the American ships. Five of the Zeros are preparing for the first organized kamikaze strike of the war, looking to barrel full speed into the biggest American ships they can find. The other four Zeros are flying escort, ready to knock any American resistance out of the sky. The fighter escort was led by Japan's ace of aces, warrant officer Hiroyoshi Nishizawa. 
As the kamikaze unit dives into its attack, Hiroyoshi Nishizawa watches from above as Zeros crash into American ships and erupt into massive fireballs. Nishizawa has always believed he's invincible in a dogfight, but as he watches, he has a premonition, a vision of his own death. Upon his return to base, Nishizawa reports to his superiors that he has shot down two American Hellcats, and he details the great success of the Kamikaze Raid. But shaken by his own vision, he also requests to volunteer for a kamikaze mission of his own. The commanders quickly deny his request, not willing to lose their top ace. Instead, they reassign his aircraft to a kamikaze pilot, and Nishizawa boards a Japanese bomber to be transported to another base. During the flight, two American Hellcats engage and shoot down the transport, killing everyone on board. Nishizawa's premonition is fulfilled. By the end of the day, on October 25th, 1944, a total of 18 suicide planes, spread across four squadrons, managed to damage several American ships and sink the escort carrier, St. Love. This would mark the beginning of a deadly wave of nearly 3,000 suicide attacks that would eventually claim almost 5,000 American lives. April 16, 1945. The USS Lafayette engages in a running battle against 22 Japanese kamikazes off the coast of Okinawa in what would become the most concentrated kamikaze attack of the war. In the 80-minute melee that follows, the Laffy shoots down nine of her attackers, but the ship is struck by six kamikazes and hit by four bombs. The Laffy's captain refuses to abandon ship, and damage control parties manage to extinguish the blaze that engulfs the back of the ship. Two tugs came out of the Okinawa, sea going tugs. They had large pumps. They came alongside us, pumped the water out. The Laffey has been severely damaged. 70% of her weapon systems have been destroyed, and of the 355 men on board, 71 have been wounded and 32 killed. Temporary repairs are rushed through, and the Laffey set sail for the naval shipyard in Seattle. Ripped from stem to stern by the attacks of Jap suicide pilots off Okinawa, the destroyer USS Laffey comes home. The Navy decided that for the first time, the public would see the dramatic effects of the kamikaze threat and granted unprecedented access to the damaged ship. Signs were placed around the Laffey detailing exactly what Japanese weapon did what damage and how many sailors were killed. The extensive damage to the Laffey took over four months to repair, and she was not able to return to duty with the Pacific Fleet until after the war ended. After World War II, the Laffey took part in Operation Crossroads, collecting scientific data from the Bikini Atoll tests before being retired to the Pacific Reserve Fleet in 1947. With the conflict in Korea escalating, the Laffey was brought out of retirement in 1951. After a shakedown cruise, she began operations off Korea with Task Force 77, screening the aircraft carriers Antietam and Valley Forge. On April 28, 1952, the Laffey, together with the USS Maddox, was ordered to blockade the Wonsan Harbor in North Korea. Two days later, the North Korean shore batteries opened fire, and a six-hour duel ensued. The Laffey expended over 1,000 rounds of 5-inch shells. 
suppressing the batteries in the longest ship-to-shore bombardment of the Korean War. After 31 years of service, the Laffey was struck from the Navy Register in 1977, earning an impressive seven battle stars and two presidential unit citations. The presidential unit citation is the highest honor. It's like the person winning a Medal of Honor. Today, the Laffey is a national historic landmark, sitting alongside other great ships like the USS Yorktown and USS Clamagore at the Patriots Point Naval Maritime Museum in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. She is maintained by a group of Laffey veterans and their families from all periods of the Laffey history. She's the best looking ship at Patriots Point.